Hey guys, in this tutorial, we are going to be learning about arguments. All right, a lot of people get confused about um, arguments because they're very similar to variables, but people often don't know when to use arguments or how to use arguments. So I'm going to be covering that in this video with an example of calculating the volume of a cylinder. This is the formula to calculate the volume of a cylinder. Let me just refresh this. So you can see here the volume is equal to pi times the radius squared multiplied by the height. All right, so the radius you can provide an input like 10 and the height, let's say 50, then the volume would be 15,707 units cubed. All right, so whatever units these two inputs are is whatever the unit this will be. So if it's meters and meters, this will be meters cubed. So that's just a simple calculation, all right? So I'm going to use this example to demonstrate how arguments work. Just so you know, the reason we use arguments, right, is so we can pass values um, of variables between different workflows, all right? So um, currently we only have a main workflow but we are going to create another workflow which is actually going to do the calculation. And then I'm gonna show you how to pass arguments between the two, both in and out. So this is useful when you're dealing with more complex automations which have multiple different workflows and you need to pass values between those different workflows. And that's where arguments come in handy. All right, so let's start off by just dragging in a few sequences, all right? Just like any process, it's gonna require some inputs it's then going to process those inputs and then it's going to provide an output, all right? And in this process, this is where we are going to be doing the calculation, but we're not gonna be doing it in our main workflow. We're gonna be doing it in a separate workflow and then we are going to be passing the variables via arguments between the two. So let me show you how to do that. First, we start off with some uh, input dialogues. All right, because now this is going to ask the human for some values, all right? So it's going to ask the human for height and the radius. So I'll just give this a name volume and we can say enter height, all right? Let's just test this, see if it's working. There you go, enter height. And then you'll then enter value here, like for example, three, you'd click okay. Then let's just fill in the next one so now also for volume let's call this volume of cylinder let's do the same here volume of cylinder and then let's say enter radius just like that so let's quickly create a new workflow so i'm going to come here to this drop down and click new sequence and let's call this um calculate volume cool and we can click create there it opens our new workflow called calculate volume and now if we come to our project tab we can see we now have our main workflow and our calculate volume workflow so that is these two over here before we get to doing the actual calculation I'm going to come here and I'm going to come to our process and I'm going to use an invoke workflow. So what this invoke workflow does, where is it? Uh, here it is, invoke workflow file. All right, make sure you're not selecting any of these other ones and you're selecting the invoke workflow file. Drag that into your process. And now what you can do is you can select the workflow that you wanna invoke. So I'll click these three dots and I'll select our calculate volume workflow and we can click open. So you'll see here it puts the path of that workflow. All right, it's a relative path to our um, XAML file or workflow that we just created. You'll see here in this invoke workflow file, there's a place where we can import the arguments, all right? And we'll get to that in just a moment. Just so you know what this invoke workflow does is it will run another workflow. So basically what we have is it's first going to ask the user for inputs. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to run this workflow over here, the calculate volume workflow, because we have invoked it over here. And it's going to be using the values that we pass into this workflow via this import argument section over here. And then right at the end, we are going to use a message box to show us our results. So now next steps is let's create our variables for our outputs of these two input dialogues. So first for our 
height, let's create a variable, control K to create a new variable, and let's call that height. Cool, and we can click enter. Then on this one, we can call this one radius, just like that. So now if we come to our variables, we'll see we have a height and a radius variable, and these are both set to generic value. What I would do here is I would come and set this to a double. All right, so basically a double data type is a number which can contain decimals. All right, so we wouldn't want to set integer because um, integers cannot um, hold decimal places, whereas doubles can. So we want to look for system.double, that is this one here. So we can click OK, and there is our system double. Now we can look here and it'll be here over there. We don't need to search for it anymore. It'll be in our shortcuts, select system double over there. I see I just made a spelling error here. Let me just correct that. That's a U radius. Cool. And we can see we have the scope set to the input sequence. All right, so that is this sequence over here. But we want to be able to access that variable later on inside this invoke workflow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set these two variables to our main scope, just like that. Now we have our two input variables, height and radius. The next step is to come to our calculate volume and create two arguments that are going to be passed into this workflow. So we can create an argument one, let's call it height. And notice I'm using a lowercase h, height, and let's say, what's it, um, radius. There you go. And now these are set to the direction in. All right, so what this means is these are two arguments that are gonna be passed into this workflow, all right? And let's create a third one. Let's call it the, um, the, the result. And this one is going to be passed out of the workflow. Let's make sure we set our argument type to be double. This always needs to be consistent. And then the results can also be a double. Where is double? There it is. So now that we have successfully created our three arguments, two with the direction in and one with the direction out, we can now come back to our main file. And you'll see here under import arguments, you'll see it says zero over here. All right. But we know that's not the case because we know we just created arguments, but it's not showing here. So it's a simple little trick. All you need to do is come here and click save all. All right, save all. And now if we come to import arguments, you'll see that our arguments in that workflow are now showing up. All right, so we can see here for our height argument, lowercase h, with the direction in, we want to assign a value to that. So the value we want to assign there is our variable we created in this workflow, which is the height. All right, notice the capital H because it's a variable. Next for our radius over here, we want to select our radius variable. All right, and the out, we have not yet assigned a variable for that. All right, so what we can do is we can create a new variable, control K, and let's call that result with a capital R, all right, and we can click enter. Cool, so we can come here to our variables. We'll see we have our radius of um, variable type double, our height of variable type double, and our result of variable type double. So that's perfect. This scope, we can also just change this to the main because we need to be able to access the re this result over here in our output. So by the message box, I'm going to simply enter our result variable, convert this to a string, just dot to string, just like that. That is basically the fundamentals of setting this all up because what we're doing now is, let me just save all, we, in this workflow, we are asking for two arguments, all right? So basically what this is doing is we're creating two variables, all right, which is radius and height. Then we are assigning those two variables, this height and radius variable, we are passing them over here into the arguments in our um, calculate volume workflow. This height and radius, you can see here is our two variables and this height and radius are the two arguments that we created in our calculate volume over here with the direction in. All right, then we also have an out, which we are going to pass the, um, the answer from this workflow out of this and we are gonna pass it 
back into this invoke workflow so we can use it um, in this main workflow under our result variable over here. All right, because remember over here, we have a result argument in the direction out and we are assigning that to the result variable. All right, so I know I can understand why this can seem confusing. Um, it's really, it is a bit confusing, especially in the beginning to get a grasp on it. But basically, in simple terms, all you're doing is you are inputting arguments into this invoke workflow and we are outputting arguments out of this invoke workflow and both are being inputted and outputted um, through variables. All right, so we are going to need a, a variable for every argument that you create in your other workflow. All right, so let's quickly do the calculation here. Let's calculate the volume. So let's use an assign. And in the assign, we are assigning the result to our formula, which is, let's refresh that, which is pi r squared times height. All right, so um, I'm going to open up this expression editor just so it's easier to see. And first we want to get pi. All right, to get pi, we can use the function math dot pi. All right, so that is simply the value of pi, which is 3,14, etc. And then we are going to multiply that by um, the radius squared. All right, so to get the to get a number squared, what you can do is you can again use the math function, math dot pow. So that stands for power. And you can see as input, it requires two doubles. So the first double is the value that you want to um, square. And then the second value will be two in this case, because we are squaring it. So we can have here our radius as the first argument, comma, and then two as the second argument. So what this is going to do, this expression will say whatever radius we input, we square that and that'll be the answer. Then we can say multiplied by the height variable or argument in this case. All right, so that is it for our expression to calculate the volume of a cylinder. Pi multiplied by the radius squared using the math.pi function and then multiplied by the height. You can click OK. And that is it. So we've already set our message box output over here. All right, and let's try and run this and see if it works. So we'll come here and we'll click run file. So let's input a height such as 10. So the height is 10. And then the radius, let's input a radius of five. You can click OK. So there it gives us an answer. 785,39. Let's go verify that. So we set a height of 10 and a radius of 5. And there you go, 785.4. They just rounded off here, but there is our volume of the cylinder. We can click OK. And that is it. So that is the basic premise of how to use arguments. All right. So you might have noticed if we come here to our arguments, uh, if we come to the direction, you'll see there was also an option in slash out. So this is basically when you want to pass a argument both in and out of the same workflow. All right. So um, usually it's better practice to just keep it to in or to out. If you're not sure which one to use, you can always use in out and it'll still work um, just like that in out in out. And if we run this, it's still going to work. So if we try run this, We set a height, height and our radius. You can see it still gives us the output. It still works. But it is better practice to just assign the direction that you are using just like that. And the last thing you might have noticed is that in the direction here, you'll see we also have something called property. All right. So what this property here means is it's a way to disable or comment out an argument so that you can use it at a later date instead of deleting it completely. So it won't be accessible via your invoke workflows or anywhere else, um, but it won't delete the argument in case you need it at a later time. So let me show you, for example, let's say um, I'm just going to drag in a right line here. And if I come here, click control space, you can see we can see the height, the radius and the result. All right, we can see all three arguments that pop up. If I set this to property, like we're commenting it out, right? And I come here and I click control space, 
you can see now pro the result is no longer accessible. There's only height and radius. Now, the second place where you won't be able to see that anymore is if we come here, right? Um, let Okay, it's still here because we had it from before. But if, say, I delete this, right? If I click delete on the result, I click OK, and I come here and save all, usually it would come and it would populate the all the arguments. But in this case, you can see it's not populating the result because we have it set to property over here. All right, so let's say... Um, we come here and I change this back to art and I come back to this main, all right? And I click save all, it should now be accessible. As you can see, there is our result, it is now back. All right, so let me just, of course, change our uh, value over here back to our result variable and we can click okay. So I'm just gonna give you a quick summary of these directions. You, you want to use an in argument when you want to pass variables from your main workflow into another workflow, all right? Remember, the direction set to in, and then you wanna use the out direction argument to pass the, the value of the argument out of this workflow and back into your main workflow. So you can pass variables both in and out of your invoke workflow. All right, and remember, you're always gonna to need to create variables for every argument that you have because you need to use these variables inside this import argument over here because you need to use them as values to either pass them in or out of the workflow. All right, so I hope that was helpful. I can understand why this would be confusing. Um, it confuses a lot of people. It took me a while to understand it in the beginning as well, but at least now uh, you have a clearer understanding of how to use arguments with a real example, as well as this new property over here to comment out arguments if you are not using them temporarily. If you'd like to download this bot, you can simply look at the description below of this video and you can download not only this bot, but every other bot we build in this YouTube channel. Great, so I hope this was helpful. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give this video a like. This is a new channel, so I'd really appreciate all the support I could get. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe um, and watch all my future videos as well. Thanks for watching.